Today we're going to repair an HP Pavilion G7 laptop with busted hinges. And boy are they busted. In fact, if you look really nice and careful, you can see that it's lifting right here. Take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Needless to say, we don't want that to keep happening. The first thing we need to do is get the keyboard out. I'm going to hold this hinge down so that it doesn't pull up too hard and possibly break something else. All right. Forward. Now, one of the problems is that these keyboards are held in with little clips here. You need a pry tool, kind of like this one. Sometimes these keyboards are held in with a clip on the bottom too. So, take the battery out. Take this off. Pull up. Is this still in? No, uh, it was holding a little. Okay. We've got your hard drive, which is easily removed. Just grab this wire, pull up, and all these rubber mounts here. Hold it in place. Do you see this little logo here? Let me see if I can zoom in on it for you. This means that we have to take this out to get to the keyboard. Let's get it out. One of the frustrating realities of running a computer repair shop is that you have to deal with the telephone. Now, that's all fine and great when it's someone who wants to give you money, but when you get a phone call from some random person out of area, well, guess what? They hung up after three or four rings, and I'm probably not going to try to call them back because they probably wanted me to sign up for a credit card machine or some other awful thing I don't care about. Oh yes. It's not part of this assembly. This is your power button here. So all of those need to come loose. They'll actually come loose whenever we take the top off. All of the screws in the top, and by all of the screws I apparently mean all one of them. One screw. This is where a pry tool comes in a lot of handy. That grammar may have been off, I apologize. So on top of having a hundred thousand screws, because you know, that's a sign of quality, everything snaps together with these awful plastic clips that you may not be able to see and I wish I didn't see either ever again don't do this manufacturers I hate you HP is officially disinvited to my birthday party and I am no longer their best friend this has been a child's guide to dealing with manufacturers so just to add frustration to this whole process, it looks like I have to remove the motherboard because everything is in the way here. It also looks like this is at very high risk of being damaged by this whole hinge situation. I hope it isn't already busted up pretty bad. These designs are pretty horrible. I'm going to reinforce this side while I'm in here, but this is toast. I'll send you pictures later. DC jack cables are really annoying to get out. You don't want to pull on the wires if you can help it because that'll destroy them. Probably when you can least afford to 
purchase something to fix it. There we go. Okay. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm not a big fan of these computers as far as how they're put together inside. I mean, when they work, they work. But they are some of the most frustrating things to tear apart. You basically have to take every single cable that you see away from wherever it is. Uh, there's a screw here holding the board down. And there's a little secret you may not know about this whole mess. I have to, and I can't really show it to you properly, but I'm going to have to take this Wi-Fi card out. Okay, so let's get the board up. Be gentle, because if you made any mistakes and didn't unplug something, you don't want to destroy it. And you know what's easy to do when you take apart a laptop? That's right, destroying things. Uh, I fired someone recently who destroyed a whole bunch of things. Needless to say, they uh, probably will not be coming back anytime soon. Uh, there we go, look at that. That's a that's a motherboard, as opposed to a bored mother. I don't know where that joke is going, but we're going to abandon it now. Okay, so what this came in for is that hinge shouldn't be able to do that. And if you look really carefully, you can see brass inserts, they're just hanging loose. The whole thing has disintegrated we have to rebuild it and this may be more difficult than I thought here's where all the pain is coming from you might notice those brass anchors those brass anchors ripped out of the plastic completely and here is an actual piece of plastic that has that same problem we're going to have to glue that back together with some high-grade industrial strength epoxy. I apologize for the noise, but I have to run a fan. This epoxy that I've got is horrible. The vapors will make you sick to your stomach. And once it's mixed up, I have a very limited amount of time to do this work. So the alternative to doing what I'm doing here is to purchase replacement plastics that have the brass anchors still molded into the plastics. The problem is that this design is just not that great. So there's a very high risk that it'll just break again if you do get a part. And in my opinion, what's the point of getting a part that's going to break? I'd much rather repair the part I have in front of me if I can which has a parts cost of zero. So I'm gonna fill this hole. I don't know if you can see, but I'm gonna fill this hole with epoxy. This is the hole in the top part where the brass anchor, whew. Oh, those fumes, oh, that's bad. <laughs> This, which you may or may not see, is an anchor. Eh, you want to get it as flush as you can with the surface. Eh, this whole process is kind of painful. Once that anchor's in, you can build the epoxy back up on the edge over here. You don't want it to come out above the anchor if you can help it, because that will make things not sit flat when you put it back together. But you also want that anchor to match up. So we're going to set this aside to cure. There is a serious problem here. 
there used to be brass anchors here and plastics holding them up. All of that's gone now. So because it's so seriously damaged, the only way to really fix it is going to be to basically rebuild it all. There is some cracking on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that while I'm looking at it. If we can do anything to reinforce what's already present so that we don't have to fix another side, we want to do that while we have this apart because once this computer's gone, this person's running their business with it and they really can't afford to keep bringing it back, especially since this specific customer traveled from 40 minutes away to bring it to my shop instead of going to a more local place. So we want to do right by our, our distant customers, especially because they can't possibly bring it back if we do wrong. That was awkwardly worded, I apologize. So the strategy, lousy though it is, for this situation is basically going to be to glue it back together such that it can never come apart again. And the thing is that if it does break down the line, it was going to break anyway. And you deal with it when that comes. You can always break it more to get it back apart. But we want to pretend like we are going all in. And my epoxy is already starting to harden enough that I can't work with it. I may have to do some more. I knew this might happen. I'm not going to sniff them for too long, if I can help it. Alright, now, I want to keep these cables out of the epoxy. And, I'm sorry you can't see this part, but... Yep. So there you go underneath that wire there it is there it is you can see the white epoxy this is actually just gonna have to sit it's gonna have to sit for a little while I need to wipe up any excess there's a little bit of excess on this I don't want that there so I'm gonna move it while it's still pliable because once it's not pliable that's the end of the game Okay, we have all this other stuff. You know, we've got a motherboard that needs to go back in and so on. I don't want to put this back in because if I put this back in now, there's a risk that the epoxy will get on it and I don't know what'll happen. We don't like to find these things out the hard way. So, the only other thing is you have to make sure that the right hinge is laying in what you would call flat. It has to be flat, at least what would be flat once it cures, because it's going to cure in whatever angle you happen to leave it, so don't leave it in the wrong one, because it's much harder to work with once it's hard. That's about it for this one. I can't really show you the rest because it's going to take a couple hours just for it to harden up enough that I can put it back together, but I hope that's helpful. Take it easy.